What can separate us from the love of God? What can separate us from the love of the divine? What can separate us from love? Nothing. Nothing can separate us from love. I like to hold this passage from Philippians and the passage that I read to you this morning from Romans. I like to hold them together. I think that they are naturally paired. And I think that it's especially good to hold these two passages together as we approach the celebration of Thanksgiving in this country. I think it's particularly appropriate to hold these two passages together in light of all of the tragedy in our world. There is something powerful about being reminded that no one is outside of the love of God. There is also something something powerful about being reminded that joy and thanksgiving, rejoicing and giving thanks, that these are fruits of love. I've always had a complicated relationship with thanksgiving. I believe that as hard as we may try with our traditions of thank you notes and our etiquette around giving and receiving gifts, I think ultimately that thankfulness is not something that we can manufacture. You either feel thankful or you don't. And no one can force you to feel grateful. And Each Thanksgiving, as families and and friends, groups of friends, all over our country gather to eat food together and to give thanks, I always think about those who cannot be thankful. I think about those who have no food to eat or those people who are alone who do not have family or friends. I think about those people who have no place to go that's out of the cold on Thanksgiving Day. I often think about those who have experienced violence in their families, those people for whom a family-centered holiday brings back memories of pain. I think also about the history that Thanksgiving has in our country. It's dubious history, a holiday which often is used to celebrate a made-up story about the history of our world, when in fact the true history is one of genocide, of native peoples, conquest and terror. For me, Thanksgiving has always been a time where I struggle with this idea of giving thanks. And it's because of that, my struggle, that I chose these two passages for this morning. I don't know about all of you, but leading up to Thanksgiving, you often hear people say things like, you should be grateful for what you have, and that if you are simply grateful, you will be happier. Or you hear people say things like, everyone has something that they can thank God for. Everyone has something that they can thank God for. And perhaps there's some truth in in these two statements, but frankly, I think they're counterproductive. I don't think they're all that useful. Because thankfulness cannot be forced. And frankly... Some people don't have a lot to give thanks for. They don't have the ability to be grateful. 
because of what is inside them or because of what is happening to them. And that is why I think, I think that thanksgiving is only valuable when it is coupled with joy and love. That's why I put these two passages together, this reading from Philippians and this reading from Romans. Because I believe that thanksgiving and joy are fruits that grow from love. <coughs> rejoice in God always. And again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to all. God is near. God is near. And I am convinced that neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor fear, nor bigotry, nor rulers, nor violence, nor religion, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers of empire, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all of creation will separate us from the love of God. Who can separate us from love? Nothing, nothing, nothing. And this is the fundamental truth of my faith, and I think the fundamental truth of Christianity, in my humble opinion. And I think it is also a truth that is shared by many Quakers. We believe that God is with us. That the divine presence lives among us. That our world is saturated in the spirit. We believe that God lives so intimately with us that we say that we each carry that of God within, the light within, the Christ within. God is near. So near, in fact, that our souls hear whispers of love in the stillness. So near that every moment can be filled with love. So near that we quake with this power, with the power of love. And I believe that joy and thanksgiving, they are fruits of this blessed nearness, this truth that God is near. They are the flowers that grow from those whispers of love. They are the fruit of that love that we carry within us. But they can only grow if love is nurtured. Like any plant, they need to be tended. So friends, this Thanksgiving, be thankful if you can. This Thanksgiving, be joyful if you are able. And embrace it without reservation. Throw yourself with joy into that thankfulness. Go ahead and let that wild rejoicing grow in your heart. Taste of those fruits of the Spirit. Let joy and thankfulness be the song in your heart and the words in your mouth. If you can, this Thanksgiving, be thankful. But friends, if joy and thanksgiving are not growing among you, if you are not able to give thanks, this Thanksgiving, if those tender seeds of joy within your heart have not begun yet to bloom, if Thanksgiving is still a small plant, 
if the ground that this world has given you, this rocky wilderness of tragedy and despair, if that does not allow you to grow the fruits of thankfulness, then please know God is near. And nothing can separate you from the love of God.